the good thing is you guys came up with an inverted of knots, which is what a lot of people do these days, and that's good. So let's see if we're going to propose another one. Any ideas? Another one? Yes. How would you describe carbon? The number of coloring. Oh, okay. Well, okay, but I think you've you've heard that before. You came to the class, okay. So we will come to coloring, but I want to I want to this one. This I think this would be a good exercise first. Is warm up to coloring. So I assume you haven't learned about knots before because that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, here's a question. If I start with if I start with any knot represented by a diagram, and I change crossing, if I do that, can I get to this? So question. Yes. By making crossing changes, can any knot be unknotted, i.e. transformed into the So Andre claims the answer is yes. Do you have an argument for proving that, Andre? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does everyone agree that we can perform every knot into an unknot by making crossing yes. changes? What about finite number of crossing changes? If I give you a diagram, can I turn it into an unknot? Where I need infinitely many crossing changes? Yes. I might need infinitely many? No, no, no. Well, if you have a limited number of crossings on the diagram, then you uh, might, well, then a limited number of uh, crossings. You have a limited number of options. Yeah, oh. So if you can, then you can do it. Okay, so can we put together an argument that this is true? Как распутать веревку, если она может проходить сквозь себя? Maybe, maybe here's, here's one suggestion. Uh, let's do it here. Let's start with an example. So I've drawn this many times, the reason is it's because it's quick. Uh, let's start with the trifoil. So I'm emulating that. So this is called the trifoil. Look at the flatten down the project the the trefoil into the page. So project it onto the page. Onto two neutral space. I'll give myself some more space. Okay, so flatten it down, flatten it down. So now I have crossing, uh, self intersection. Yeah, so this sits inside two dimensional space. So I've got x and y axes. X and y axis for my plane. Now, so each point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. Now, I'd like you to imagine that you're an ant on the on the uh, on the trifoil, it's you. Okay. So now you have an x coordinate, you have a y coordinate. Now you also are, you're also wearing a watch. Okay. So we're gonna you're gonna measure the time. Okay. So you have an x coordinate, you have a y coordinate, and you have a time coordinate. Switch it out. Now, so now, when you're at this point, what I'd like you to say is that your t value is zero. Okay, so let me let me put that there. And I wanted to keep this, but maybe I want to make this bigger. Точности то, что сказал Коля, то есть двигаясь будем все время подниматься. T это то самое, насколько мы будем подниматься. And that's t is zero. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do. is start here t equals zero and move along the, the self-intersection circle on the plane and as you move along 
your t coordinate goes from 0 and it ends at 1. Okay, so here t equals a quarter, t equals a half. T equals three quarters, and you get back, and T equals one. Okay. Now, as you go around, your x and y value changes. Okay. So let's. I don't know. Maybe I can give myself some new axes. So maybe this point is. Uh, so that's one, two. So that's like. 1, 2, 0, and let's say this point is 3 quarters, so let's say this point is a half, 3 quarters, 3 quarters, okay, does everyone see what's happening? So as I go around, my x and y value changes. Okay. And my t value just goes uniformly from 0 to 1. Okay. So now I've got a, a path of my ant has three coordinates x, y, t. Okay. So now let's draw it in three dimensional space. Okay. So I've got my draw it. Uh, so here I've got my triple, my triple. Here I've got another one. What I'd like to do is put a put uh, draw this in three dimensional space. So I've got a an x order, x direction into the board. I've got a y direction, and I've got a t direction. Going that way. Okay? So at t equals zero, I start here. At t equals one, I end up here as well. Start here and end here. But in between, as I my x and y value changes, as I come down, my my t value goes up. So I go down but I'm also coming out. Okay, so I sort of spiral, I spiral, I don't, I'm not sure, if I draw it up there I'm going to mess it up. So, so everyone pay attention to my finger. So I'm going to go around my trifle, but I'm going to also change, my time is going to change. So I'm going to go down, spiral, and end up here. Okay, so well, it's just, like a slinky, I'm not sure what the Russian word for a slinky is, but a slinky is you compress it and then you you bring it out. And so I've got my slinky. <laughs> so slinky is like uh, that kind of thing. Okay, but now do you see what's happening? Okay. So now, last step is put your eyeball here and look down. Okay, so last step, steer down that side, that from that end, and draw, and draw the yellow. So, so this point is this point. Okay, this this point is going to project down to this point. Okay. We want, I want you to project it onto this page by keeping track of the over and under crossing. So what I'd like you to draw is this yellow, this yellow knot, using a knot diagram. Okay. Now, do you agree it's, it has to sit above 
It has to sit above this thing. Right? Because if I project down, it's going to land on that thing. Okay? But what I'd like you to do is keep track of the crossings. So do you see here that the yellow is going, one arc is going this way, and it's over the arc coming this way. Okay? So what I'd like you to draw is a, a yellow knot, like that, that sits above this guy. Does, he, does anyone want to give it a try? A try? Well, let's... So all, all, all that's going to happen is that... So this crossing here... Well, where is it? This... This crossing here... Okay. In three space, it looks like this crossing. Okay. And this crossing here... Maybe I forgot to put it in. Oh. And here's... This crossing here is... is where is it? It's this part... And going up and this part. Okay. So all we have to, I want you to decide if I look down this side, what does my knot look like? What is what is obvious? The result is obvious. But what is what is this crossing? Uh, it's horizontal. It's horizontal? And what is this one? That way? Oh, wait. No. No, 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 no. no. You should be able to know by that time yeah. point, shouldn't you? Yeah. So if t is zero here, this t is later, so it's yeah. going under. This t is lower than this t. Yeah. So remember, as we go across, our t increases, so this is lower, so this must be over. Yeah. And over here, our t is lower or higher? Lower. Lower, so we must be... Uh, under, and here, oh, we've already done that one. Yeah. What's happened? Uh, it, it transformed into a, 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 an unknot. An unknot. Unknot. Yeah. So do you see, do you see what's happened? Yeah. Okay. So, and the question was, can we, can we unknot uh, any knot by making crossing changes? And we're seeing that we can always... Now, um, and the other part is, do you agree that I can get from that knot to this knot by making crossing? So this is the unknot. Okay. If I, so if I do this construction, that is, I take a knot diagram, just a, and I project it onto the page, and I construct from that a knot in this way, where I pick a point and I go around, and then I put it into R in three-dimensional space, then I get an unknot. And that unknot is obtained by the knot I started off with by making crossing changes. So I've just, what crossings have I done? I've just changed this crossing. So we see that any knot is indeed equivalent to the unknot if we perform some crossing changes. So that would be one way to argue it. So, by changing this crossing. So any knot can any, any knot diagram can be turned into a diagram for the unknot by making crossing changes. Okay. So if that's true. Okay, so the, well, let's the, let's put that aside and let's get to the consequence. Смотрите, у вас есть шторок. Вы каждый раз идете по нему, ну как бы желтой красной стрелкой, и каждый раз он поднимается. Ну, соответственно, у нас получается развязка по уровню. Ну и что? И почему это что? У нас получается вот такая вот спиралька, которая Показали. вот так вот склеивается назад. Смотрите, еще раз. У нас есть вот, вот, вот такая вот спиралька, и мы ее склеим вот так вот. И поэтому в 3D мы ее можем вот так вот, ну, поскольку вот. у нас каждый раз не было перестений, мы можем вот так развязать, что будет обычный круг. Теперь поняли? Повышаясь чуть-чуть. Да. Вот, и дошел в ту же самую точку. И концы замыкаются снаружи да. от пружинки. И концы замыкаешь. И, 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 и смотришь сверху на эту картинку. 
И какое пересечение было сверху, ну, такое и будет сверху на диаграмме. Вот. И почему эту диаграмму можно развязать? Потому что в 3D она такая же по, так по топологии, как ну, вот, вот, вот эта вот картинка. Yeah. Она так такая же, как круг. And I can get to this guy. So we're just saying we can pull the string apart if we allow crossing changes. That's the only statement that's been made. And if, if you're if that's uh, complicated, just pick some examples. Can you turn this into that by making crossing changes? Okay. And get, you know, sit down at, at your paper, see if you can do it for this one. Maybe it's a little bit harder. Okay? But that's all the statement that was being made. And so the, the consequence is that if so, if any knot diagram be transformed into an unknot by making crossing changes, then we could define an invariant where we count the number of crossing changes we had to make. So for example, Uh, we could count the number of crossing changes not K now uh, do we do we see so, this is I'm going to erase this we'll change this shortly Now, so when I, when I, how do we, how do we, do, how can we define such a thing? So when I say the number of crossing changes to a knot, the knot, what do I really mean? I really mean pick a diagram for k, pick a diagram for k, and then count the number of crossings I need to make to turn it into that. But we know that for a knot, we have to be, we might have lots of diagrams for the same knot. So for each diagram, I have a cross an, an unknotty number. Okay. So to get a well-defined invariant, we have to do the same thing we did for the crossing number, where we look at all the possible diagrams, and for each diagram, we look we count the number of minimal number of crossings to get to an unknot. Now I'll, I'll write down that quickly because I want to get to. So maybe this is uh, complicated. I want to get to some more uh, readily computable things. So, like the crossing number, the unknotting number will be the minimal number of crossings. needed to unknot unknot a diagram for k over all diagrams. Okay, it's, let's, I'll say a few words about this and then we'll, we'll start something um, to turn everyone to the same page. Okay, but this is, this is illustrating a, a, a point. The unknotting number, this is called, what you call the unknotting number, and the crossing number, okay, they're both not invariants. Okay, so this one is a, a not invariant if we take the minimal number of overall diagrams. But we've seen that these invariants, although they're easy to define, relatively easy to define, what's bad about them? Hard to calculate them. So they're very hard. So, so we want some more practical invariants. Okay, so. Величина должна вычисляться не по бесконечному количеству картинок, а по какому-то вполне определенному каким-то алгоритму. То есть это должна быть вычислимая функция. 
а не просто определенное там какой-то минимум бесконечного множества или что-то такое. Effect. The unnaughty number. You might think that to compute the unnaughty number, I just look at all the. Uh, you might think I'm, I only have to check over a finite number of of not. Maybe I'll let you think about that. But it turns out this you, this is also over an infinite uh, number of not. So it's those these are not easy to work with. Okay, so let's let's think of some some uh, easy invariants. Well, okay, so I've already gone. <laughs> Some time, so let me just have a let's have a taste of the unlock of the of coloring. So, and we'll talk more about colorings next week. So next week, I hope you'll return because we'll look at. I didn't expect that uh, to be uh, so difficult. So, so more practical. Okay.